Hi, this is Mikara Motion and welcome to Commoner's Diary. And today I'm gonna show you how I actually filled up my entire AOS packet. And we're gonna start with I-485 form or application to register permanent residence or adjust status, okay? If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. If you're following my entire K-1 visa journey, all right? Don't hesitate to ask questions, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Hit the notification bell for more updates. So without further ado, let's start. Okay, so ang gagawin natin is ipopull up ng natin dito sa Google yung i-485 form. So make sure na you're going to pull this up on USCIS official website. Okay? So kung may account ka dito, much better. Okay, so let's click here. This one, form i-4 PDF. So I suggest you to download it and save it on your folder. Because in my case, ang nangyari sa akin is sinagutan ko siya right away pagka pull up ko sa website. Sinagutan ko siya and then I tried to print it out. And what happened, hindi siya nag-print out. I mean, yung mga sinagutan ko. So I had to start over again. 18 pages to. Itong i-485. Okay? So I suggest you na isave mo muna siya. Or download mo siya, click this, and then save it on your preferred folder sa desktop. Okay, so here we go, let's start. By the way, you can just do handwritten dito, pwede naman siya. Kasi may mga boxes din dito na hindi mo siya matatype. Yung mga, may mga grade out dito na ano, na boxes na hindi ka pwede mag-type. So, hinandwritten ko na lang din yung iba na hindi ko pwedeng sagutan dito sa computer. Okay lang yun. It's totally fine. Alright? Okay, so, let's start. Sana ba ako? Nakapull up na siya dito. Alright. So, ang sabi dito, start here. So, pakabilisin ko lang to. Short and simple. Hindi ko na kayo papahirapan. Okay? So, based on my experience, yung pagsagot ko dito. Okay? Yung, yung mga, alam ko, syempre nagbabasa-basa din ako. Naghanap din ako ng mga ibang YouTubers. So, in my case, ang gagawin ko dito, papadaliin ko lang siya. Alright? Hindi ko na siya i-explain. Again, this is only for K-1 visa or fiancé visa. Okay, after you get married, you have to file an adjustment of status and uh, yung iba pang mga ibang papers like advance parole to travel, what else? Employment authorization and everything. So, yun. So, let's start here. Again, A number. Saan makikita tong A number na to? A number mo makikita mo to sa NOA. Sa mga resibo na pinadala sa'yo ng NVC, the USAIS, okay? And doon siya, A number. That's your alien number. Okay, and then, here, of course, you're going to type here your married name. Not your single name, kasi nga, technically, you're married, right? So, I put my married name here, which is Ruiz Nicar Ramos. So, it's gonna be my middle name. And then, here, sa part 2, or other names, you have used since birth if capable. So, technically, ito yung maiden name mo. Or yung, yung single name mo. So, I put it my maiden name, Ramos Mikar Sifra. That's my maiden name. Or kung meron ka pang ibang name na ginamit since birth. Okay? And then after that, of course, your date of birth, your uh, gender, and kung saan ka pinanganak, or city or town of birth. So, part 1, page 2 of 18. Put your alien number here. In my case, hindi ko na siya pwedeng i-type. So, isusulat ko na lang siya. So, country of birth. Saan ka ba pinanganak? Sa Guatemala ka ba pinanganak? Or what? <laughs> diba? Lagay mo dyan. So, in my case, I put it Philippines, of course. And then, again, alien number. And include additional A. Numbers in the space provided. Alright. So, USCIS online account number. Kung meron ka lang naman account na ginawa sa USCIS website. So, put it here. Kung wala, okay lang. Uh, US social security number. So, in my case, after I arrive here in the USA, I get married after a few days and then we applied for social security number. Meron na akong social security number. Pwede rin namang wala kung wala pa. Leave it blank. Okay? And then, number 13, 13A, US mailing address in care of any name. Of course, ako yun. Kasi dito ako nakatira 
sa address ng asawa ko, of course. Yeah, so I put my name, my full name there, and then the complete address kung saan ka nakatira, saan kayo nakatira ng asawa mo. Alright, self-explanatory yan. So, number 14. Ano bang nakalagay dito sa number 14? So, let's read it. I suggest you to leave it blank. Okay, kasi hindi ko naman siya sinagotan. Just leave it blank. Okay, basahin na lang natin yan. Pero ako, again, hindi ko siya sinagotan. Okay, so number 15, same page. Ano ba nakalagay dyan? Provide the information for item number 15 to 19 if you last entered the United States using a passport or travel document. Of course, ano bang ginamit mo? Ako ginamit ko, passport ko. Okay, so I'm gonna put my passport number here. Alright, travel document number used at last arrival. So leave it blank. And then the expiration date of the passport. Kaya na ba mag expire yan? Lagay mo dyan. Ano yung nakalagay sa passport mo? And then, number 18, counter that issue to passport travel document. Siyempre saan? Saan pa? Wala nang iba kung, si, kung di siya Pilipinas or kung sa Guatemala ka man pinanganak. Bahala ka. Okay, non-immigrant visa number from the passport. Ito ay makikita sa visa na in sa atin ng US Embassy. Okay, yung pula. Andun yan sa visa mo na nakalagay sa passport mo. So in my case, it starts with letter P. Ayan, lalagay mo siya dyan. And then number 20 kung saan ka nag port of entry sa ka ba port of entry in my case sa Washington ako I'm gonna put Washington state uh, Washington DC kasi to eh so sa Dallas ako eh alright so I'm gonna put Virginia kasi ako pa siya ng Virginia date of last arrival dun mo makikita to sa I-94 mo port of entry mo diba I'm pretty sure uh, you will not be on this video kung wala ka pang I-94, yung port of entry, arrival departure. So, kailan ka ba dumating? In my case, I arrived here, let's say September 25, 2019. And so, nakalagay dito sa number 22A, when I last arrived in the US, I, so I'm gonna put this, was inspected at port of entry. So, click here. And blah, 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 and so on. And then again, leave it blank. Leave it blank. Leave it blank. This one. Jump tayo dito sa Form I-94, Arrival Departure Record Number. Sa mo makikita to, of course, doon din. Sa ano mo, sa I-94, Arrival Departure. Nandun doon yan. Okay. Expiration date of authorized stay shown on Form I-94. Di ba, meron lang tayong 3 months to get married. So, yun din yung expiration ng ano mo, ng pag mo sa US. So, in my case, December 25, 2019. Alright? Before I nearly forgot, here, dito sa 22A, dito, ilalagay mo dito is K-1 visa. Okay? K-1 fiancé visa. Don't forget, kasi ako nga, hindi ko siya ma-type dito, so hindi ko siya mapakita. So, dito, ang ilagay mo is K-1 fiancé visa. I highly suggest you read, written na lang kung ganito rin yung case mo. Written na lang. Sulat mo na lang. Jot down notes kung anong number ka. Hindi mo siya masagutan. So, K-1 fiancé visa. So, after that, so, status on form I-94. Ano ba yung nakalagay doon? Siyempre, of course, K-1 visa or fiancé visa. Okay, natin yan dyan. Fiancé visa. Okay, so again, click save. Okay, so let's jump on page 3 of 18. Again, here's a number 24, K1 visa ulit. Number 25A, provide your name exactly as it appears on your form I-94 if any. So, kung ano nakalagay doon? That's your maiden name. Alright, so I'm gonna put my maiden name. Ramos Nicar Sifra. Alright. And again, part 2, read this, alright, and let's jump to 1A, box number 3. Let's click this, again, read this, alright, so in my case, I read this already, and then pick this third box. Person admitted to the United States as a fiancé or blah blah blah, 
K1. K1 visa or non-immigrant. K1 non-immigrant. Okay? Again, leave it blank. And let's jump to leave it blank, all of them. Okay. Hindi yan makakatulong papahaba lang ng video yan. Ayan. So, let's jump here on number two. Are you applying for adjustment based on the Immigration and Nationality Act or INA Section 245? The answer is no. So, let's click here. No. Alright. And then again, I suggest you to read this thoroughly. So, again, papadaliin ko lang yung video. Again, uh, alien number. Put your alien number here. And then part 2, page 4 of 18. Okay, so number 3, receipt number of underlying petition, if any. So, ano nga ba to? Ito yung receipt number mo dun sa notice of action. Uh, in my case, it starts with WC. WC, Chorba Chorba. <laughs> Okay, that's your receipt number. Priority date. Okay, so yung receipt number, ito yung kung kailan nila na-receive yung pag-file mo ng K-1 visa. Okay, so makikita to sa notice of action 1 or 2. Ando dun yan, lagi. That's your receipt number. And then kung kailan nila natanggap. Hindi mo yan, in my case, na-receive yun noong 11-20-2018. Alright, so again, um, let's leave this blank and let's start with address history so let's jump on number 5a so again you're going to put your address here your latest address here in the u.s again of course all right country usa where else dates of residence syempre Kung kailan ka dumating, no? Siya na game yun dyan. 09, 20, 2019 up to present. So, ato, again, grade out dito. Lagay mo na lang dyan. Type, uh, isulat mo na lang present, up to present. Okay? So, physical address dito. Kung saan-saan ka nakatira nung, uh, for the last 5 years. Ano ba nakalagay dito? Provide, provide physical addresses for everywhere. You have lived during the last five years, whether inside or outside the United States. Provide your current address, which is this. If you need extra space to complete the section, use the space provided in part 14. Okay, so again, again, ito yung uh, current address namin nito. And then, syempre, lalagay mo dito yung address mo for the last five years. Self-explanatory na yan. Okay, so let's say example. One, two, three. Soriano Street, Cavite. 4100 Cavite Philippines So in my case, isang address lang yan And then again, let's jump to page 5 of 18 Put your alien number here, again And on part 3, again number 8A Yan, continuation lang yan kung saan-saan ka nakatira Employment history Lagay mo dyan yung mga ano mo, employment history mo Yung recent hanggang for the last 5 years din So in my case Hindi ko na i-disclose yan. Okay, so call center and everything. Photography within the last 5 years. Yun yung mga naging job ko. So, write it here. Alright, pati yung taon. Ayan. Name of the employer. Ayan. Street number. Kung saan ka nag-work. Kung self-employed ka. Put your business address or kung sa bahay ka lang kung anong, anong ginagawa mo. Alright? and Of course complete address, kung kaya na ka nag-start, kung kaya na ka nag-end, and so on. So, ako, ang dami kong nilagay. <laughs> okay, so, let's jump to page 6 of 18, part 4, information about your parents. Information about your parent 1. Okay, so, unahin ko mo yung mami ko. Family name, of course. Ramos, given name, Malu. Middle name, Sifra. Parents, first name at birth. If different in above. Okay. So, ilalagay mo dito yung maiden name niya. Family name is Sifra. Given name, Malu. Middle name is... Yan. Again, maiden name to ah. Itong 2ABC. Maiden name. Ito, married name ng mama mo. Ito, maiden name. Nung dalaga siya. Again, date of birth. Kung kailan ng birthday ng mama mo. Kanyang uh, gender. Kung sa siya pinanganak. And so on. Again, dito sa information about your parent 2. Parent number 2. Legal name. Family name is Ramos. That's gonna be my father. Given name is Rod. Middle name is Topaz. That's my uh, father. 
Wala namang maiden name yung ano natin, no? Mga tatay natin, no? So, leave it blank. I left it blank. Date of birth niya. Of course, male. Town of birth. Beauty city. Country of birth. Philippines. Current city or town of residence. If living. So, lagay mo dito yung address. Kung buhay pa yung tatay mo, no? So, in my case, my dad is long gone. He's at peace. Okay. So, I'm gonna put deceased. Deceased. Alright. Save mo yan. Okay, so let's move to page 7 of 18. Put your alien number again. Okay, so nakalagay dito, what is your current marital status? Of course, in my case, I'm married already. And if you are married, is your spouse a current member of U.S. Armed Force or U.S. Coast Guard? In my case, no. Okay, how many times have you been married? Or in, uh, including annulled marriages and marriages to the same person. So in my case, isang beses lang. First time kong kinasal. Okay. And moving on, number four, A. Information about your current marriage, including if you are legally separated. Okay. If you are currently married, provide the following information about your current spouse. So, of course, I'm gonna put my husband's full name here. So family name, Ruiz. Given name, James. Middle name is... There you go. A number. Walang A number. My husband doesn't have A number because he's born citizen here. Alright? Current spouse, date of birth. Birthday ng asawa mo. Date of marriage. Kailan kayo kinasal? Current spouses. Place of birth. Ayan. Siyempre, lagay mo kung saan, kung saan siya pinanganak, no? Okay, so, hindi ko na siya papahabain. Lahat ng sinasagot dito, sample lang. Alright? Your town. Virginia Beach. Virginia, USA. Place of marriage or of, uh, to current spouse. Kung saan kayo kinasal. Diba? Siyempre, lagay mo na dyan. Kung saan kayo kinasal. Virginia, USA. Okay, number 10. Is your current spouse applying with you? No. In my case, no. Because is born citizen. Okay, so information about prior marriages, if any. Okay, so in my case, I've never been married before, or hindi ako kinasal dati, or whatsoever. This is my first marriage. And hopefully, the last. <laughs> of course, it should be. <laughs> Alright, so let's move on to page 8 of 18. Again, put your alien number here. Don't forget that. Okay, so wala tayong kinalaman dito, no? Sa mga box na yan. So, let's jump to part 7 here. Biographic information. So, ethnicity. What's your ethnicity? Are you Hispanic, Latino? So, in my case, I'm a Filipino. So, I'm gonna click on this. Not Hispanic or Latino. Race. Select all the applicable boxes. Asian, of course. Again, let's move to page 9 of 18. Put your alien number here again. Continuation lang yan ng biographic information. What's your height? Let's say I'm 5, 6 pounds. Kung ilang pounds ka. Your eye color. What's your eye color? It's brown. In my case, it's brown. Hair color, it's black, of course. And then part 8. General eligibility and inadmissibility grounds. So, and let's read this. Have you ever been a member of involved in or in any way associated with any organization or associated fund, foundation, party, club, society, or similar group in the United States or in any other location in the world, including any military service? In my case, the answer is no. Okay, so leave these boxes blank. Alright, so wala na tayong kinalaman dyan. Save lang natin. And then, let's move on to page 10 of 18. Again, put your alien number there. Okay, so ito, hindi ko na to babasahin isa-isa. I highly suggest you to read everything here and answer thoroughly. Answer based on your experience. Just be honest, okay? So, hindi ko na hiisa-isayin yan. Masyadong mahaba yan. Kasi, iba-iba naman tayo na experience. Diba? Ako, ang sagot ko dito lahat is no. Kasi, I've never been to and I'm, alam mo yun, wala, wala akong na-experience kahit isa dito sa mga questionnaires dito. Okay? So, tong question na to, part 8, page 10 of 18, 
up to page 14 of the 18 yan. So, again, you have to answer this based on your experience. Be honest. Alright? It's just a yes or no. Alright? So, ayan, hindi ko na siya isa -isa And I'm gonna jump on part 9, page 15 of 18. Here. Okay, so, the question here, read the information in the form I-485 instruction before completing this part. Are you requesting an accommodation because of your disabilities? Are you disabled or whatever? Okay, in my case, no, I'm not disabled. If your answer here on number one, part nine, is no, then leave the following boxes blank. Okay, so moving on, page 15 of 18, part 10, it says here, applicant statement. Select the box for either item number one, a or 1B if applicable, select the box item number 2. Okay. So, ang nakalagay dito is, I can read and understand English and I have read and understand every question and instruction on this application and my answer to every question. So, I picked 1A and then I left other blank. Again, it depends. Pero kung pareho naman tayo ng case, I highly suggest you to just click this. Alright. Applicant's contact information. Let's move here. Number three. Telephone number. Just put your number here. Mobile number. Five seven one two three four five six seven eight. Your email address. Nikar. Email. Just put your email here. And then. So, hindi ko na babasahin yan. Masyado nang mahaba. And then, put your signature here. After mo i-print out and then the date kung kailan mo siya pinirmahan. Alright? So, let's move on to page 16 of 18. Wala tayong kinalaman dyan dahil wala naman tayong interpreter. Leave it blank. Page 17. Wala tayong kinalaman dito sa contact information, regulation, signature, person to prepare. Yung prepare. Kung meron kang lawyer or whatever, in my case, wala. I did it myself. So, wala. I'm gonna leave it blank. Again, page 18 of 18. But, always put your alien numbers here. Okay, don't forget that. So, the last and final page is additional information. Again, you're just gonna put here on number 1A, B and C, your married name. And then your alien number here. In my case, it's grayed out. So, ang ginawa ko na lang, sinulat ko na lang siya. Alright, and you're done. Just save and print it out. And you're good. Review mo lang ulit. Okay. And by the way, I also printed out the form G1145 e-notification of application petition acceptance. So, pull up na rin natin to, no? So, in my case, naka-pull up na siya. So, ang ilalagay mo dito, si petitioner, of course. Diba? Ang ilalagay mo dyan yung petitioner mo. Yan, yan lang. Sa page lang yan. Ito lang ang filapan mo dyan. So, for you to be able to get notification through text na na-receive na nila or you're going to receive or whatever. Okay? So, yun lang yun. 